Heal reduction doesn't hold too much value. Like, you're not gonna kill Echo with heal reduction or without it, and no one else heals. So it's kind of a waste, plus it only lasts 3 seconds, which is kind of pathetic. Uh, I generally take this when I go Landry's. I don't really do it on Ludens that often, unless it's absolutely necessary. So this could have been optimized, like, you can just get Banshees here and not take Oblivion Orb at all. And then you get like a Horizon Folks into Decap and that will give you a massive long range. Because that's how you properly position. You have two two guys to engage anyway and you have Soraka. So you shouldn't die, honestly. Okay, let's talk about... That's a good 3 mana flow band. So let's talk about how the level 1 should work. Level 1 is going to drop his yo-yo. And he's going to do... Well, and he's going to do... Well, 5 seconds later and he's going to hard shove it, okay? So to not do that, if you can predict where it's going, you know what he's going to do. And you can't shove as fast early game. So that's why you can take attack speed in your runes. Here you didn't do it, you went, you, you went um, MR2 APs, yeah. Uh, I usually take attack speed versus Echo. And you get, he gets you to 0 0.69 attack speed, so you can just level 1, just spam auto attack on waves. And then try to wave clear as fast as possible to not get shoved in. Plus you can punish him more aggressively when you have the attack speed. So it's a really good adaptation versus any melee. So I'd, I'd gamble on you. So your primary job is not to die and farm up. I like that you're auto attacking wave, you gotta continue, continue. Continue constantly auto attacking. That's a good cue. You should have hit this minion because the comet. See, that's one of the classic ones. Um, you gotta pay attention to the comets. This would be all fine, but because you hit, your comet flies here. And look at the minion. The comet ruins the minion. And you just gotta take it. But yeah, it's very difficult to keep keep up the tempo while farming everything. So you need to like know this in and out. You have to have this in your brain. That's good. If you can. If you can have space to shoot Qs into him, that's good. That's always good. Here you have to forfeit and then hit, hit, and Q. Q for the double refund. He got level 2 before you, which he cleared a ward? He got level 2 because he cleared a ward, right? Because he got he got level 2 off of 6 minions. Um, you can see here he has two, 2 vision score on the sweeper. So that's actually very annoying. So yeah, that's uh, but yeah, you should just let the minions push to you because you already lost the race early game here You can let him hit you um, So now you're kind of struggling and this is the issue when you fall You should never be in this situation versus echo because if you're low like this You can't access the wave you have to access the wave to match it Otherwise he shoves you and then you lose all your mana and all minions under turret But now you it's you're struggling to contest because you're very low and if you come close, you're just gonna press the button, you know? And even if you trade, you're just gonna blow all of your mana. And then he comes back with TP. Now it's like damage control. You, you're, you're playing essentially damage control. You have to create... You, 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 don't, you don't tank this. This tanking is unnecessary. Now you have to recall. Clear this recall. Get out. You, you lost far too much HP. You can't stay here. Nice. Good minion setup. And now this wave is too close, okay? If, if we know anything about wave management, what's gonna happen here, chat? What is gonna happen here with the wave? They're seemingly equal. In fact, your minion is missing a little bit of health. But what do you think, Who, which side is gonna win? What do you say? No, blue side is gonna win. Blue is gonna slow push. Why? There are two reasons. Blue are clumping, okay? Because blue's already at attacked, that means that they clumped. And then they're gonna focus the target better, okay? If you, if you ever played World of Warcraft Arena or Raids, you will know how focus is important. You have to focus a specific enemy. So blue minions are all gonna focus the first guy. Well, these are gonna spread out. So blue minions are gonna hit more. And they're gonna be more efficient at clearing. So even if this guy is missing this little sliver of HP, they're gonna win. Also, second reason why they're gonna win is look at where they are. This is the line of scrimmage, as the Americans would say. This is the line of scrimmage. What does that mean? These guys are like, the fight is much closer to your turret. That means on the wave two, when it arrives, yours arrives faster because it has to travel less distance Then yours pushes slowly. So anyway, this is a bad wave to leave. If you leave it like this, you lose shit ton of minions. You, 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 get, you can get locked out in a freeze and you will lose a lot of XP. That being said, you either leave it and cut your losses or you hard shove it and back the fuck up. This is where you have to back off. Now you see the fight, you immediately rotate, good eye. Okay, oh, you see him? Beautiful, he should die here. There's no escape. Secure it, nice, good job, go, go recall. 
You can't even call for our help to shut in this. Don't, don't, um... Oh, oh, that's so risky. That's so risky. You're playing a dangerous game. You're playing a really dangerous game. That was absolutely for no reason. Like, you, you... This is like the equivalent of... There are two bridges, and one is like 10 meters further than the first one, but the first one has a toll. And then you paid with your blood to cross the first bridge when the second one is like 10 meters left. You know, you were just too lazy to move left and you had to pay the toll. So it's just pointless to trade to gain a access to the lane. You can just do it other way, you know? And you should just ping these guys to shove the wave and get the fuck out. That's generally how you play that. You either try to like squeeze in slowly yourself and bounce the wave or call the jungler to help you do it. The cookies are gonna help you. Oh, you went Dark Seal. Okay, I like that. I like this variation more. Even though you're not gonna get stacks on Echo, I still like this variation more. Here the clear is uh, a bit inefficient. You're, you're getting one by one instead of trying to get that one guy ahead. You know, you're not predictably trying to clear here. You're just trying to focus on one by one minions. So you lose that. Now Echo is free to roam because you like... What happens if you get shoved in or recall? You lose Pryo. He has Pryo to rotate. Actually he recall and TP'd I believe, yeah? And he got four Dark Seal stacks. So that's perfect thing for Echo. And you just clear and shove. As soon as Echo starts missing, start a clock in your head. 10 seconds, get the fuck out. Okay, it's pointless to hit. You're not gonna get a plate. Back off, back off. You're not gonna get a plate. You're not gonna get a plate. Oh, no, why are you going back? Oh, the plate greed, okay. So that's, that's first mistake, first huge mistake. Plate greed. You didn't flash the box, so you die no matter what. Okay, interesting. That's a first mistake, and I can see why it happened. You were feeling frustrated that, you're, that he got fed, so you wanted consolation prize, and then you paid even more price, which is how soul cube works, basically. It's one by one mistakes and snowball. You wanna, I usually use the anchor thing. Like, you wanna be the anchor to your team. When your team fucks up, you have to carry the rock, you know, you have to slow the game down. So yeah, that was very greedy, absolutely pointless. But yeah, no, no big deal, it happens to anyone. Now you're in a completely losing scenario and you don't stand a chance for a second. So now, Echo is a matchup where you, if you would play Echo matchup competitively, you would probably go into it with the idea, I will never kill him, I just have to live farm, okay? But in Solk, you're kind of always hoping, oh, if this Echo is a garbage player, I'll bait him, maneuver, outplay, and then kill him. But now, even with that solo queue, rhetoric, like, you just, you just give up. You just give up on this matchup. You don't want to fight him ever again. So here comes neutralization. And you're just... Okay, that was a trash flash by him. He will probably still get you because it's Echo. Yep, he gets out. Yeah, that was just awkward. That was just very awkward. He had no business clearing the way. Like, again, when you're forfeiting lane, when lane is over, you play... Um, Look how much forward you went here. Let's just look at this. Okay. It's not like he wasn't there. He's here with full HP. Okay. He's with full HP, fed as fuck. And now, he goes missing. Look at the map. No jungler account. No bot lane account. No echo account. For all you know, you can have four guys here. For all you know, there's four guys here. And that's how you should play, especially when you have no summoners and you forfeit the lane. This, there's four people in this brush waiting for me, you don't play. Until you keep counting them, they're popping up. And even if it's just Echo, even if they're, everyone is in lanes and he's the only guy missing, you probably still don't do this. He just placed a ward and you can't fight Echo, ever. So basically you clear at the maximum distance, you know? You, you don't want to go in deep. So you can... To clear this minion, you can stand here basically and clear it. That's like the safest position to clear from here. So you go here, 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 and even go behind it for some reason. And there's absolutely no reason to go behind the minion while clearing. This is how you get cheesed usually in solo queue. And this is what I do to people very often. Like, let's say I'm ahead. And I'll, I'll kind of push the wave and then on the bounce, I'll just... Sli slither around and look for a pick off. If he stands here, he has no no chance. 
If enemy stands here, like let's say Vygar, you're well because you go long range Q. He either gets hit by Q or backs off into your EW. That, that, that's it. You know, this is how you cheese people. And that's not even like a misposition, that's almost a patient. So Morgana could have easily just binded you from the brush or anything. Okay, so two deaths, two mistakes. That's good. That's good, because it's way better to die with your mistake than to die because you had nothing to do, because it's impossible to play. It's Kobayashi Maru. You don't want that. We want our, our, our own mistakes so we can fix them. Okay, that being said, it's solo queue. The game is always winnable. People are stupid. You just have to beat the anchor point, slow the game down, farm up so you're relevant when the, it actually matters. You might, you, you can just play perfect from now on, okay? In an, ide in an ideal game where everyone plays perfect. Let's say you play perfect right now. From now on, you'll still lose, okay? But you can't assume that the game will be such. So you go into this game like, okay, I fucked up. They will fuck up next. Now I'm gonna play perfect and just slow it down. And if I get a chance, I'll make a comeback. And you will get chances in low elo. Like, even in high elo, you're gonna get chances in solo queue. Rarely is a game beyond repair. Yeah, maybe there are no chances. Maybe it's a coin flip. You never know. <laughs> That's the thing. At this point, like, it should be over. If enemies are worth, worth of their salt, like, it should be over. Now you have no one on the bottom side, you can't make plays. Usually what you want to do in scenarios like this, okay. Scenarios like this where you start wildly losing. Top losing, mid losing, jungle losing, bot lane losing, you're losing. Like, what do you think can be the winning play, chat? Do you think there's a winning scenario if every single lane loses? Do you think there's a winning scenario? Play safely and punish mistakes? Play safe and punish mistakes is more like a uh, singular idea. It's more for you. Because you can't control four other players. They're going to do whatever the fuck they're doing. Like, you may be playing safe and they're just going to bleed out. You know? It's chaos. It's a, it's a random play. It's a random play. Um, so, now, if you can calculate that the game is over, let's say, just based on, like, oh, top behind, jungle behind, bot lane is fine, and mid lane losing hard. You can either play for pickoffs, which you have a decent comb for, but they can match them. They got Shen and all that. You can do a random group, okay? You can do a random group and try to work on that solo queue mentality. I've won so many games like this that were lost, literally. So what happens is you hard shove this wave, let's say, and then you just walk up with Nunu top lane. That's it. You call Nunu and go top lane as three. Let's say... Top laner comes back, or even top laner plus a jungler, and then you 3v2 Chaos. You try to kill one, 3v1, 3v2, and then you kill him, and then you're again 3v0. So then maybe Echo comes, and then they go one by one, because it's solo queue. People are not coherent. Then you try to pick them off one by one. So creating Chaos on one, one side of the map and doing random groups is probably the best thing you can do when everyone's losing. Obviously, when the game is far beyond. Like, let's say you have win-win conditions. Oh, we have perfect late game. We're supposed to lose early. We're going to scale and win. Probably not the best to do, but... If you recognize that the game is going out of control, you should try to do that. It's entirely possible. Okay, here you can kind of play with him. He just used it and he's level 5. You have lethal on both of those, okay? Even if you're behind. Lethal, lethal. 6 stacks, 6 stacks. Kills them both. This guy, before he was 6, you could kill him. Okay. Um, that was your potential comeback play. Like, he goes in as level 5 and you actually hit a Q. Now, here you panic. Here you panic because you... If you just look at this... Like, this is a Shaco dead scenario. Okay? Just think about it. You have everything up, he doesn't have ult, doesn't have Q. Those are the only two abilities that save Shaco. If you hit Q, EW is unmissable. If you hit EW, you have all in lethal. Okay? It takes you a while to Q, and while you Q, you're backing off. There's no reason to do that. You can take on these two, and even if, you, even if Shen taunts you, like here, you're fine. Because they're going to tank the third. And then you can kill one or possibly two. And you land this, but on this guy. Should just immediately turn, hit Shaco EWR. And that's your potential. That's a thing you, like, you can change, you know? That, that could have been a potential kill there. Like straight up, Shaco troll there. Like he doesn't understand Volkus. That, I can guarantee with my life, the Shaco has never played Volkus in his life. <coughs> and it opened up counterplay. It was there for the taking. Now this again, 
too risky. Your team is not on the map. Uh, you have to try to kill and he has the ult. Go. You should have ulted. You should have ulted that. There's no reason not to ult that. That was dead Shaco. Again, he used Q and R. He preemptively used R. Look. Look what he does. You hit him off of the box, which was phenomenal. You only do W. You should have done EW. He does ult immediately. And you can see the stacks. You know which one's the true one. Look at his HP. That's like 0.5 seconds with, with ult. This guy won't even catch you. He basically had him there again. Because again, he used two of his abilities, which are safety. He was mad you didn't kill him first time, so he gave you another chance there. He was, he was uh, teasing you. Um, here you go into analysis, usually. You're like, okay, how do we win this? Is Stopwatch gonna win this game? Like, it, it, it's only good for one play. Will you win the game with that one play? Highly unlikely. Like, you just, it just won't do anything, honestly. So I would have... I definitely wouldn't buy a stopwatch. Like, you could just wait it for a larger, that's it. Or a blasting one, not larger. Should just got blasting. Yeah, you can still see the stack when you ult, because the clone doesn't get stacks inherently. So as long as you tap him once before, you know which one's the real one. That's why when Shaco is chasing, you can always do just one W while you're backing off. Because it doesn't even make you stop moving. One W, tap him, and then you know. Okay, now you rotate bot. Because you know Echo is topside. Now you rotate bot. This is the mirror. This is the mirror rule. Um, how the mirror rule works is... Okay, you can, use, you can use mirror rule defensively and offensively. Defensive version is... If a jungler is making a play. Let's say your jungler is top, li top lane, ganking. This is very simple to, to memorize. You just have to count people on the map. That's it. It's very easy to pay attention. Okay, you have top, your jungle and top lane are making a play top. Let's imagine that. So they're fighting 2v1. Bot lane farming 2v2 normal, and you're in the mid lane. So now, even if you are winning mid lane, you don't make a play. You don't go aggressive mid lane. You don't try to get a kill mid lane, even if you're winning. Why? Mirror rule. If you're, you have two top two guys on top, they only have one. That means their top laner is not in the vicinity of countering it. Or he's on route. Either way, you respect him. Because if he's not there, most likely thing he's doing is doing a gank opposite side or even mid lane. So that's the defensive mirror rule. You just never make a play if you see your teammates making a play somewhere else. You ne you'll never see pros make two plays at the same time. Now, the aggressive mirror rule is enemy when enemy teams are mega ahead. They're mega ahead and they make a play top side. What do you do? Even if you can reach in time, you probably lose because they're ahead. So what do you do? Let's go mirror. That's like uh, danger levels and threat in chess, you know? Like, they attack your bishop and you're like, oh shit, I'm going to lose bishop. You can try to defend it and then you lose a pawn or some shit. But then you'd be like, okay, I'll take your knight. I'll just go knight bot lane. So they threaten bishop, you take knight. And that's good for you. Unlike in chess, in league it's actually good to trade equally when you're behind. Because relative goal difference changes. Their advantage is the same in gold, but the relative one closes. So eventually the lead makes no sense. Because 5k gold at, at 60 minutes is literally negligible. But 5k gold at 15 minutes is game over. Okay. So yeah, this is a mirror play. You know echo is top, you force bot lane. And this is a potential for a comeback if played right. Okay, they're going in deep. That's kind of good for you. Okay, that's one for free. I don't know why you went around. Should have been going this way. Um, where's the ult? There it is. You only got one. You got a back call. Eh, okay. Two for three. Eh, two for three is all right. Because when you account for things that are happening... Camille gets free CS and she one shots plates. She can run here, get a plate. So two for three when you're behind. I don't know if you got shutdowns. You probably didn't. It's totally fine. If you don't die and defend this, it's great. This is worth. But it's all right because they invested five characters. You invested four characters, which means one character is getting free farm. Although this guy is a bit trolling by not pushing. He should get one plate, maybe even two. So you can equalize that plate. Uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't walk. You don't walk in this case, okay? 
There's one also good rule. If you do a rotation, if you do a rotation bot lane, you walked all this way, okay? You go here, buh, 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 farm up one wave, you go here, recall, okay? You don't walk back. Why? Why, why don't you walk back? Because they won the fight. So if you walk back, you can't walk back the shortest line. You have to go around. Okay. So it comes basically the same to recall and go back from base. First of all, you're always safe. Second of all, you get to invest money. So you get higher gold efficiency. You have 1,000 you're sitting on. When you're behind, 1,000 gold is a lot. You're behind 3k. Okay. But if you don't buy, you're behind 4k. Provided enemies have 100% efficiency, which they don't, but you want to close the gap by being higher efficiency than them. So you recall, you cash in, you will waste extra three seconds apart instead of going back like walking, but you come up, come back with higher efficiency. That's one extra recall. Recalls are very important. But yeah, now we're back for defensive playstyle. Don't follow that up. No, 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 no. That's a bait. That's a bait here. Nope. That's a, that's a bait here. We don't follow these up. Okay. Th this fight here is a really hot e-girl calling for you. You know, you're, you're getting baited. She's not into you, bro. No, you're, you're getting baited here. They're fighting and you can't really do anything about this echo. So you shove. So you shove, bounce the wave, rotate top. Okay. Shove, bounce the wave, rotate top. Because you cannot get plates. Maybe you can sneak in one. Two auto attacks, two auto attacks, not more. You can even do one actually. Go back. No. You're you're greedy. You're greedy. You don't have to get the gold. Ah, did you just die? I think you're fine. But regardless. Okay. Look at the turret. You need it to go below 3k. Just just pay attention to the turret. You hit it once, two, three. You needed one only, instead of three. Um, but you stay until you get the money. You'll see professionals, they're, they're gonna get money while they're channeling the recall, like 7 seconds, you know? Um, look how much extra damage you dealt. Just pay attention. What is this? Half a plate. This is half a plate extra. More. 60% of plate extra dies. Because you did those extra auto attacks, you know? So that's all just pointless standing there. So, and you could have died for it. That way you get the money. Yeah, there are two ways to get money. Either assisting, which is auto attack, then you can leave like to this range and you'll still get the money if it dies within like 10 seconds. Or you stand this close, you don't have to auto attack it. You can stand this close if it's like very risky. You stand here and minions kill it. You get the money still. So those are the two ways. Okay. We're going back to bot lane. That's free kills. You're panicking. Don't play that defensive. They're, they're giving you money. You play, you, you hesitated too much. You had a really nice potential there in Jin. Okay, now you're, now you got into the weird scenario where you didn't have vision. Okay. He dies. Cool, you can, you can combo, you can combo, you kill him. Just wait for new new root. Nice, good job. Come back. Just come back. Close the gap. Two and a half K gold. That's nothing. Okay, dragon. Probably too much, I would say. Camille doesn't have teleport. I wouldn't do this dragon, honestly. This is a bad play. Like, okay, another rule. This is another rule, a good one. It's a really good one. Even when you're ahead, this is not good. But when you're behind and get a get a play, get a play going and you trade like two for one when you're behind, don't continue. Or especially if you get a clean fight, if you get one zero, two zero, don't ever fucking continue. People always do this shit. Like when you're behind, like, there's resources, there's effectiveness in the game. There's so many variables people don't think about. So people immediately assume, oh, we're ahead because we're 4v3 in a potential fight. No, you're not because you're so far behind. To get that two for one, you have to invest all of your resources, flashes, ults, like all your abilities, whatever, you know? So you're going in and starting an objective. First of all, starting an objective makes you like vulnerable because you're tanking the objective and have your positioning. And you're gonna come into a fight and, like, they're just gonna come in with ults and fresh. Like, what are you gonna do when Echo comes with an ult? Or Shaco comes in with an ult and smite? Like, there's nothing you can do. Caitlyn with no summoners, you without flash. Like, you're doomed here. This play is doomed. There's just no way to win this. 
I know this is not your fault your team forced this sh shit play, but it's just a good rule, you know? When you're behind, take what you can get, reset, play it again. Do that two, three times, you're equal. And what's also like counter counterintuitive is if you play safer after getting advantage, the enemies will play more aggressive. It's an emotional thing, it's a psychological thing. Like if you're if you're playing a losing matchup, but you're playing so well safety, they're gonna go make stupid plays to try and break your safety and kill you. And that opens up possibility for you to even kill them and shut them down. So there's nothing more frustrating when enemy comes in, like kills one and backs off. Takes one plate, backs off, you know? Does proper things that just never le lets you get that like punch back. You feel so frustrated and you make bad plays. Well, now we're back to 4,000 and a dragon. See, before that dragon, that was two and a half thousand and one drake. Now it's two and four. It's very sad. Very sad how the distance ran away when you were making a comeback. <laughs> no, that's a crime. You're not in position to make a mirror play, so you have to follow it up. Let's see, maybe we can get some trades. Maybe they're trolling. Keep in mind, there's shutdowns to take. Echo, Shaco, Morgana. All good cash. You can just tilt. I would have just tilted that shit for money, straight up. Yeah, you ulted late, you got a shield. You let him live. Like, if you play a perfect game, you would have avoided those both of your deaths, let's say. You would have avoided both of your deaths. You would have killed that Shaco one time out of two, because he can't be dead at both times, obviously. And you could have got that extra kill. And I'm not sure what else, but... Like, and you could have had, like, more farm. So imagine yourself now with 5-0, 2 shutdowns, 160 CS. Like, that's massive. Like, you're at a point of game-changing levels, you know? You're forcing now, which is all right. I, I tend to do this a lot. This is not even bad, honestly. You're just probing for a mistake, because you know they can't do too much. So that's all right. Also, there's a point when you're so far behind, buying defensive is not, not good, you know? So you just buy glass cannon and hope you play perfect. That, like, it's just higher efficiency, you know? Because if you buy defensive, you're calculating in that mistake, you're calculating in that baiting power. But when you're so far behind, that only winning scenario is just dealing as much damage as possible and getting the lucky positioning or per perfect, like, positioning that you don't die and don't get hit. That's uh, that's gambling, and sometimes you have to gamble when you're behind. I would probably go glass cannon here and just hope I play perfect. This is good. No idling. Doing stuff. This is good. I really like this. Okay, a lot of people don't do this because they, they keep in mind that jungle is reserved for junglers. And it's just stupid, silly notion. You can literally just go Lucidity every single game. The difference is minimal. Because now Lucidities are so good on everyone. And they're good especially on Velkos because Velkos deals 25% damage, true damage roughly. If you account for damage on face value. If you account for execution damage that's higher value, it's even more efficient. Because you usually do true damage at the end of the fight where you're cleaning up for execution. Which I believe is the right way to think about it. That execution damage is more valuable than basic damage. But regardless, Magic Pen, 75% efficiency to 70% on Velkos. So, like you're paying 800 to get like less value out of magic pen than any other mage. Why not just get 601 that gives you flash barrier cooldowns reduced, especially when you combine it with cosmic insight, which I mentioned early, you could shave off like 70 seconds from flash and 40 seconds from barrier, 42, I think. So like, it's so like you get so much more usage. You can make more plays. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can literally just get Lucidity every single game. You buy Magic Pen when they don't have MR. That's it. Because Magic Pen, the less MR they have, <coughs> the more value it has. Simple as that. The more Magic Pen you have, the higher value the Magic Pen is. So yeah, in this case, they don't have any MR. So you can literally just go Sword Shoes and Ludens, and that's going to synergize for good penetration. Yeah, you can definitely use your old. See how watching yourself from external source and using like a different lens puts you in a different perspective. In a game, I would imagine you didn't notice you're not using your ult. But even if you watch the game immediately after with yourself, you probably wouldn't notice it. But by watching it with someone else with like an ob like kind of like a objective view, semi-objective, uh, you get into a different perspective and look at yourself from a different light. 
That's why if you want to review your games, don't review them immediately after you finish a game, because you'll be too emotional and hot-headed, and you will, you will be like, oh, look at what is my top laner doing, and then you're gonna skip your same mistake you did in the game, you know? You will not notice it because you're too emotional and in the same mindset. So if you, like, leave a game to, to sizzle out for, like, two days, you come back, you're gonna watch it as a completely different game. And you'll be like, shit, am I this retarded? What did I do? I'm doing this play? What's wrong with me? You know? Happens to everyone in fight. You should follow up fight. This, this could be game changing, you know? These fights are... Uh, these fights are like 20 minutes plus. They're beyond the gold one, okay? So this, this is like beyond this, some five minions. You just want to run. Maybe you catch a shutdown that turns an entire game around. Okay! That wasn't for a shutdown. I would usually do it in that way, but when you're this behind, Maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. Who am I to judge? Like, I don't even know, honestly. Like, the only way to judge this is by result. That R flash, I, I, I don't know if it's worth it. Like, I, I can't judge it. I'm not smart enough to judge it at the moment. I, when I'm ahead, I don't ever invest flash almost to get a kill. When I'm ahead, because I know I'll just win if I play it safe. When you're behind, maybe. Maybe you need it, and like butterfly effect can take it somewhere else, some different timeline we don't know about. If you didn't do that, you know, it can, it can flip either way. So it's just, it's just like trust your gut in that case, you know. Okay, they back off. This guy gives his life for the cause, then they go back, and now you're gonna be four v five. And this is the biggest downside when you're behind, like lack of vision, and eventually that kills you because it all goes dark. You have to face check, and you die one by one until they get there. Like, it's almost an unstoppable strategy. It has to be very well coordinated to be dealt with. And now you just have to give it up. It's gone. Give it up. No. It's not worth it. Without vision, trying to face check, it's not, they're never gonna let you. Like, that's just abandoned, you know? So, three deaths. No matter how shit your team is, and how horrible it is to play against Fed, Shaco, and Echo. You could have died zero times so far. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing to think about. It's very optimistic. Some games are more death friendly though. Sometimes you might give your life to set up a three for one and then you get a Baron or Dragon after, which is totally worth. But here's just, yeah, all three are mispositioning. There's not much you can do about it, but it's all good. People are stupid. Maybe they make a mistake. Maybe they forget to reset after winning one fight. Okay, okay. Let me look for punish. Nice try, that's it ult. Because he has Q and ult. He used Q and now he used ult, so you can't kill him really. Oh shit, he almost died. Getting aggressive as fuck. You have to look for a kill here. You need to like clip one guy. Okay. Okay. See here if you had flash, maybe that could have been a nice double, like double or even triple. Flash combo, maybe, I don't know. Okay, that's good. You guys have really good chase. You need to be on this. That's sad, but you guys get 1k. You need to join the fight. Good ult. You gotta kill him as soon as possible. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. That's good. You recall, they can chase, and then you defend. You lose one in him, defend this, defend this, top is gone, top is gone, just defend this, make sure it's only one, and that's fine. Then you chase him at the end. See if you can get any more kills, because there's a shutdown in Morgana, beautiful. Okay, you can chase him, clear the vision, or clear the minions. Okay, that's a semi comeback. They went from being 11k ahead, I think, or 10. Just uh, being only seven, playing a really <laughs> with that Gale Force. Yeah, again, you're blind. Maybe you try blind QR from like here. Don't ever step closer because you're gonna die and that's game over. Okay, nice attempt. They, they're, you're gonna die. You're gonna pay with blood for that because it took you too long to position. <laughs> nice attempt, but no counterpoint. Yeah, you're the only one there. But because you, that's just it. You can't really contest it, though. 
Like, if Caitlyn didn't die, you maybe had a chance as a team, but Caitlyn died earlier, so it was just doomed. Not a bad game. Yeah, you did quite a lot. You were a decent beacon for your team in terrible times. Died four times, all four preventable. That's very important. All four preventable. Just by not dying, so think about this, just by not dying, you would be on the map for two minutes longer. Two and a half minutes longer if you like count in exiting the base. What does that mean? You would have more CS. Even if you're not better at farming, you would have 220. Even if you're not a better farmer. But if you improve your farm, you could have 250, 260. And you could have snagged a couple more kills there if you weren't stingy. So put it into perspective, you could, you could be a lot stronger than you are. I don't know if you would have won because I, I, I'm, not, I'm not omniscient. I, I can't predict if that would be a win, but you could have played ahead better. As good. What is the optimal wave clear with abilities? Well, depends. Um, if you have three points in W or two, you can double W and then Q the front. That's like the fastest one. That's that You do that one if you want to do a rotation immediately. Boom, boom, clear, use, prior, rotate. That's usually what you do. EW backline Q front is also good, which... That one is if the if the danger is imminent. Okay, there's a difference. And I explained this when I was uh, coaching Yamato on Vilkas. But generally why you use it like that. So think about it like this. W has two abilities and two stacks. And they're doing the cooldowns. But Q and E only have one. So let's say you use... Let's say you use Q double W. Okay? So what happens then? If a fight happens in 10 seconds, you just got one W... You have your E and you got your Q back. You have three abilities. Okay. If you use, that's why you, I very often use the E, W, Q clear. So you clear the back line and front line. But what happens then? Because only used one W, the second one is stacking up. So if a fight happens in 10 seconds, you have E, two W's and one Q. So you have four abilities in total. So you're more powerful in an imminent skirmish. So usually if a fight is imminent, you do that clear. But if you're just going for like a wide top lane rotation, just do it faster and get the fuck out. So yeah, that's the difference.